Helen Cordero's storytellers keep her family tradition alive. She put her, her life breath and her soul, her spirit into every piece. You know, it goes back to, you know, working with the clay and bringing it out from Mother Earth. You know, you offer the cornmeal, and then when you start to work with the clay, you put your spirit into it by breathing on it and, you know, working with it and putting your soul into the, into the piece. What Helen did was she taught the outside world, the non kochiti world, that these figures all had stories, or what we'd say with narratives. And by telling us that story, she personalized pottery uh, for the non-native world. And what Helen kept alive throughout her life, through her smile and her willingness to talk to people, was the story of her family and her life at Cochiti. She was almost a, a hero to me, a heroine to me. Helen Cordero was not only a famous potter who invented the storyteller, but she was, you know, also my grandmother and grandmother to a lot of other kids in, in the Pueblo. She cared about family, she cared about culture, she was very big on traditions. She can remember, you know, sitting around with the other children, listening to her grandfather tell stories. Not only is the, the story being told, you know, from, from visions, but the children are also envisioning that same story in, in their minds. And that goes hand in hand with Pueblo life. We don't write down our stories, they're told, um, you know, by word of mouth and we teach, you know, verbally. And you have to be a good listener if you're gonna, if you're gonna learn. I think her biggest struggle was that she started so late in life. She didn't start till her kids were grown and they had kids of their own. And she kind of had that free time or that idle time. She started off with pots and she just, you know, she couldn't make them symmetrical and it didn't, it wasn't flowing for her. It wasn't something that she enjoyed doing. And she made, I think, some animals at first and she thought of her grandfather. She said, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a piece for my grandfather and he's, he'll be telling a story. When we create the figurine, the eyes are closed because he's really envisioning the story as he's telling it. And his mouth is open because he's narrating the story. And she always said, you know, make him, make him handsome or gumatawa. And the children that are climbing around, you know, she said, look, look at the children now and see how they sit or see how they lay and that's how you place them on the grandfather. And she always said, and, and make them look kind of chubby, you know. She liked to see chubby children. That was her idea of healthy, healthy children. Social commentary in the Pueblos is a long-standing tradition, and Cochiti is well known for that, for that social commentary through clay. There is figures at the latter part of the 19th century, 1880s, perhaps 1890s, of circus figures, of Spaniards, of Anglos. They appear to be bureaucrats and other officials. Helen grew up in a world that was quiet of other inventions, other places, that she grew up farming and, and taking care of the family, taking care of the traditions in the village. 
Following that, that period of World War II, there was this rapid increase of, of things that happened. Part of it is maybe radio or television that comes to the village. Part of it is electricity that comes to the village in the 1950s. So Helen is one of those people who, who are between those eras. Helen telling the story of her grandfather is reminding people that to listen to these stories that your elders are telling you, that they still have relevance, even the day of TVs and cars and the things that, that Helen enjoyed having around her, that these stories that her grandfather told her still had a day-to-day -day relevance to her, were still important to her. When she was creating, she was in her you know, her happy place. That was, that was her joy and that was what she, she really liked to do. Helen's work is like any other great aesthetically minded person. Somehow they anticipate the coming era and people's appreciation of things. She had that ability to, to see the world, understand the world, digest it and put it back in front of us and through her clay. Her ability as a visionary is seeing the world and showing us what the world looks like. You know, I'm proud of her. She really, I want to say, broke the ground for uh, everybody else. Working on the storyteller, that was kind of a way for her to put a special time in her life when she was growing up into something that she was creating. I think that's, you know, so special.